Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that which you have done. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to appear before you. Your name be praised forevermore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Almighty God for what he's doing in our days. For the numerous things that I pipeline for his people. For the yesterday powerful meetings, not only in our church, but in other churches and ministries. We want to say thank you, Lord, for the conclusions of the first of the tenth month. The Bible says, your word will never return back to you void, but it's accomplished the purpose for which it is sent. So our heart is set. Our expectations are high for the manifestation of unparalleled joy, gladness, and cheerful feast. Testimony upon testimony. Injury time testimony. That we bought fulfillment in the life of his people. For the end of every matter is better than the beginning thereof. As we are getting to the latter part of this year. Getting deeper and deeper. And to say bye bye to 2021 and welcoming in. 2022, we know it shall be from glory to glory for every one of you. You will not be ashamed. You will not be disappointed. Your expectations shall not be cut off. Starting from this, God that answer prayer will begin to show forth in the affairs of your life. You will not end this year empty. Amen. The scripture say your beginning will be greater. Your later end will surely increase. Amen. Let that form our expectation. Amen. Let that form our expectation. <laughs> your expectation will always commit God. I therefore want to encourage every one of us. It can only get better for you. Amen. It will not get worse for you. Amen. Your smile shall be full. Amen. Your smile shall be full. Amen. Forces of heaven that you have learned. All those forces are you, as you engage them. Amen. God of all supernatural turn around. Will turn things in your favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. So, we will be starting a new topic today. And I want to encourage every one of us who is online now to give our first offering, as I have explained it the last time. And our first offering is to share this broadcast with your friend and be a partaker of the greatness of God that never elude those who preach the gospel. He said, the Lord gave the world great is the company of them that publish it. Publish what God is about to do this hour. Connect your friends, share with them. There is a blessing awaiting everyone that is sharing the gospel. Everyone that carried the feet of good uh, glad tidings never lack the same. As we share with them, some sharing that will be coming in for you from friends will be meeting your own expectation in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. God bless you. God bless you. I know you are an obedient child of God. Thank you for sharing. God bless you. God bless you real good. I'll be sharing with us on the subject we are picking now on the wonders of his presence. The wonders of his presence. To make it clear, the wonders of God's presence. The wonders of God's presence. And the objective of this uh, sharing is to draw our attention as a child of God to a treasure that is hid or hidden in the presence of God, the presence of God. There was a man in the Bible by name Moses. Moses was a stammerer. A stammerer. Hmm. I don't know which areas of your life that you look like a stammerer, not physically. <laughs> I don't know which areas of your life I'm talking to someone this morning that look like that areas of life you are a stammerer. Maybe in childbearing. You know, the, 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 the mystery here is that a stammerer it's a kind of impediment of speech that makes them to say things clear. Or even when they manage to say it, it takes time. They struggle with the word. Their word never comes straight. There's a lot of there's a lot of delay about what it means to have an area life. That, conf that that describe you as a stammerer, spiritually speaking. What people are getting done in few seconds takes you hour. What people are getting done at a certain age elude you. You are saying it, but you never complete it. Such as starting a project, the project that should have a, 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 a life, I mean, a span of one month is taking you three years. You are like a stammerer who is trying to say good money and is struggling with the false letter G. Go, 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 go. You know, there are many things that you can end with go. It could be good morning, it could be good afternoon, if you go goodbye. He's not coming clear. Maybe your life and certain areas of your life is like that. You are the very one God is sending me to this morning. This man Moses had impediment of speech to the point that even Moses acknowledged it before God Almighty. When God came to Moses, that area of his life was his concern. There are things that are your concern this morning. There are areas that are ongoing process in your life that is always a concern to the point that even when opportunity presents itself, you will give consideration to that area. And you know what consideration does to our life? Consideration, especially satanic one in the areas of our weaknesses, give birth to doubt. And doubt will give birth to emptiness. 
You remember the Bible says, if thou shalt say unto this mountain, and shall not doubt in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say, as potent as the law of faith called confession is concerned, that guarantee a delivery because it has the backing of heaven. Doubt will negate the system. So that areas of life of Moses was his consideration when he has the greatest employment opportunity with God Almighty. The one that ever reward task, ever. He's a task payer. When he came to Moses, the first thing Moses said to him was, Lord, you know I'm a man with this infirmity. No matter how God tried to convince Moses, Moses still remember that he was not eloquent. He was not eloquent. God came to him in chapter 3 and verse 7 of Exodus. Hmm. I see God visiting you in the name of Jesus Christ. In verse 7 of chapter 3, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. For I know their sorrow. And verse 8, And I come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the Canaanite and the Hivite and the Amorite and the Perisite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Verse 9. Here is the employment opportunity. Now therefore Behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen their oppression, wherewith the Egyptian oppressed them. Moses, come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring them forth, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. What an opportunity. What a gainful employment for God Almighty, the owner of the universe, gave to Moses. Look at what Moses said. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that should bring forth the children of Israel. And Moses began to give excuse. And began to give excuse. Now, one of the excuses that Moses gave was that he was a man with an impediment of speech. He said it's not eloquent. So Moses gave all manner of excuses. But one of the most one that he considered was his tamarind leaves. And that's what happened to us sometimes. We embark on something, we ended up having a reason to consider our impediment of, of speech. Sometimes it may not be of speech. 
your own could be economy somebody else could be something in chapter 4 and verse 10 and Moses said unto the Lord oh my Lord I'm not eloquent neither here for here to fall nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. I am slow of speech. You see that? I am slow of speech. But I am slow of speech. <laughs> that area of your life that you are slow of speech is that the area I want to address what to do in those areas what to do to fast track your speech what to do to accomplish something very fast very fast you know what Jacob said he gave us a revelation of what God does they ask him how how I mean how easy has it been? How come you got the venison? Quickly, he said, the Lord brought it. The Lord showed me. Behind every quick accomplishment in life or great accomplishment in life is the finger of God. He said, the Lord gave it to me. The Lord brought it to me. In verse 11, and the Lord said unto, unto Moses, Who have made man's mouth? Or who make it the dumb, or deaf, or the seen of the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now, therefore, verse 12, go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. I prophesy to someone this hour that from now onward that areas of your life where you are of a slow speech that areas of your life where your tongue is slow in pronouncing things the tongues of life is slow slow in getting married, slow in childbearing. You know, our life speak of his glory. So when your life is not speaking on sat in certain area on time, it's like you, you are like a, you are like Moses of a slow tongue. I pray for you and I pray for myself. Every areas of our life that could line up along a slow tongue, God that created mouths, He will cause the mouth of your life, the mouth of your destiny, to speak of His glory with the speed of God. That's why they always say, when you pray for someone, say, I bid you the speed of God. This morning, in every areas of your life, where it looks like you have a slow tongue, where it looks like you are, not, you are not definite, you are not clear in that area, in a short word, you are not reflecting the will of God. God is going to mend it. God is giving you speed that you might speak faster in that areas of life. So that was the story of Moses. That was the predicament of Moses. My friend, this hour, I want you not to bemoan yourself because God has come with this topic to open your eyes sometime 
in life we just need to know one small thing and things will begin to flow and i believe this topic is one of such topic that will flow the blessing of your life that will remove barricade of barriers of life and give you an everlasting motion that cannot be stopped in the name of jesus christ when you go to the book of art moses had a testimony he had the case at the beginning. Sometimes the case is not an indication that you have missed God. Stop judging yourself by the case of your life. <laughs> I know that's what people do, but don't do that to yourself. People tend to judge you by the case, the case file of your life, especially at the early stage of your life. Sometimes God allow you to start the race of life with a case. You remember there was a man that Jesus found and they said, the disciple, they told him that this man was born blind. That was a case. That was a case. He was born blind from his mother's womb. What a grievous case. But you know what the Bible says? Jesus said, no. It is not because the father sinned or the mother. He said, because that the glory of the law may be seen in his life. Maybe your life has a case in the morning of your life or in the middle of your life. One thing I know, as long the case is in the courtroom, the file may delay, the mentioning may delay, but the judgment will come at last. Amen. And that is your case and my case in this one, in this hour. Moses had the case. Here is employment opportunity, but here is his limitation. But act of apostle has this to say. That the same man that had a case, he was later described with that case. The Bible says he was mighty in word and in deed. Mighty in word and in deed. I'm going somewhere with you. <laughs> it was just like the case of that child that was born blind. The same. The same. He was born blind, and Jesus said, It's not because the father commits sin or the child or uh, uh, anyone committed sin, but it's because the glory of the Lord might be revealed or might be made known in him. How can a man that was described to have impediment of speech, how to suddenly emerge to become a man that is mighty in words, how? <laughs> a man who had a case, bad case in the morning. Look at Acts chapter seven. Acts chapter 7. Here is the testimony of Moses. Verse 20 say, In which time Moses was born? I, I'm coming slowly this morning because I want you to know there is a solution to everything that have been on traffic, jam. It's not coming true. He said, in which time Moses was born and was exceedingly fair and nourished up in his father's house. Three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. 
the conclusion was this and Moses was learned in all wisdom of Egyptians and mighty in words and indeed mighty in word and indeed mighty in words let's look at amplify what amplify says amplify on that verse mighty in words and indeed mighty in word he says so moses was educated in all the wisdom and culture of egyptian and he was mighty look at the next word powerful in speech and indeed powerful amplify put the 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 the, the word powerful in bracket powerful <laughs> of what importance is it to speak plenty of grammar and it has no effect Moses' word became powerful, powerful. And you know what? how power is defined? Power is ability to do work and get the desired result. That's how science define, uh, define uh, power. Moses was a man full of words, even though they were slow, they deliver. Even though they were slow, his word deliver. That become your story today. That everything that delay in your life will deliver an answer. Everything that look like they have delayed, they will deliver an answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm a message Bible says Moses was educated in the best school in Egypt. He was equally impressful <laughs> as a thinker and an athlete. I want you to understand where I'm going. What turned around the life of Moses? Because in chapter 33, you will hear what Moses had to say. In chapter 33 of Exodus, Moses knew the secret of success. I will read from verse 13 because of our time. The account there said, uh, uh, I will read from verse 12, verse 12, 33, 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou says unto me, bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know. Thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. You see that? Whom thou will send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, Thou hast also find great, uh, thou hast also find grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray thee. When Moses finally said to go, that's what 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 uh, turn around the slow speech, the uh, 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 what the slow tongue, the impediment of speech. That's what turned it around. When Moses agreed to go, this is what he said. He said, Lord, you have not shown me who will go with me. Yet you say, you know me by name, and I have found favor in your sight. Now, verse 13, he said, uh, are you there? Exodus number 33, verse 13. He said, now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And look at what God answered him. And he said, my present shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. That's why we are looking at the, uh, the wonders of his presence, the wonders of his presence. The wonders of God's presence. If we just say his, you may not know. The wonders of God's presence. And he said, my present shall go with thee. My presence, we go with, with it. And you know how my message Bible put it? And God said, God said, my presence, we go with you and I will see the journey to the end. 
and we see the journey to the end. Praise the Lord. The presence of God is one of the treasure of believer in fulfilling anything at accurate speed. God said to Moses, who had case, don't forget, he has a big case file. You know, when you cannot talk well, it's a major big case. Because in absence of God's presence, God has anointed your tongue, has anointed your mouth. You remember in Luke, he said, and I will give you a tongue. I will give you a mouth and wisdom that none of your adversaries shall be able to gainsay nor resist. The Bible says you will have whatsoever you say. You see the power in your mouth? But now Moses have deficiency here. And God said, look, to correct this, my presence will go with you. My presence will go with you. My presence will go with you. I know God, in, even in New Testament, God said, Lo, I am with you always. I will never forsake you. I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I want you to understand that there is, a, there is power in God's presence. If God's presence is around you, everything must line up in order. If God's presence is around you, you are in charge. If God's presence is around you, you are in dominion. If God's presence is around you, everything around you, including negative issues, he converted. them. God's presence is a converter. That's what we want. I want, to, I want us to see what happened. That's those ones that we want to explore as we pick this topic. The presence of God will always say make a difference. We want to look at those differences or differences. Moses that have a big case, case fire, suddenly God turned it around. Moses was described as a man with mighty words and mighty deed. Can you see that? Mighty word and mighty deeds. What turned around the predicament? It was God's presence. It was God's presence. It was God's presence. If you look at Psalm 16, Psalm 16 and from verse 11, Psalm 16 and verse 11, In verse 10, he said, For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. He said, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And thy right hand are there are the pleasures forevermore. At thy right hand, there are the pleasure forevermore. I welcome you to this series. It's loaded. God has spoken volume about the dynamics, about the dynamics of his presence. And he spoke them. He revealed them so that it can become ours. He said the secret thing belongs to God, but the thing that are revealed belong unto us and to our generation, that we might obey the word of the Lord, that we may do the word of the Lord. They are revealed for our doing, and our doing guarantee his reward. As this series goes on, things will change for you. 
everything that has made you to be slow in life, as you engage, as you do what God said we should do to bring his presence, as you secure his presence, they will all be converted to a testimony. Every dead issue in your life, they are coming into the most horrible season of their life because God is going to combat them to life. Thou will show me the path of life. There is always part of life, even in our wild wind. Even in our storm, there is a part of life. He said, God will show me. God sees life in the midst of every deadly situation. But you need to get his presence to show you the route of escape. You need to get his presence. You need to get his presence. I thank God for your life this morning or this hour you are listening to me. As we journey on this topic, you will discover that some of those slow speech, slow tongue, <laughs> they are there for the presence of God to convert it to glorify his name. That's why they are there. He allowed them as a stepping stone to, for you to come to limelight of life. Why are we talking about Moses? If there were no slow speech, possibly we will not know the power of God's presence. The Lord bless you. The Lord prosper you. God is still working wonders. All we need to do is to get him to the same. The wonders of his presence is loaded. You can't afford to miss any segment. This morning, begin to look left, right, front, and backward of your life and look at those slow tone, slow speech. You are, a student, you are a student, it's taking you too long to graduate. Asu will, in Nigeria, they call them Asu, strike, lack of fee, teachers are not coming. <laughs> There is no barrier God devil brings your way that the presence of God will not convert it. You remember the children of Israel going to Cana and there was Red Sea, slow speech. Traffic came. Sea was in the front. But the presence of God that was with them parted the Red Sea, made it a bridge parted it and use it to defend them. They cross and they have a defense. The enemy meant it for evil when he was chasing them to, towards the Red Sea. But God took advantage of the Red Sea and created a barricade. The horse and their rider, they perish in the Red Sea. The devil over your life is going to perish in that affliction. You will go scot free and glorify the name of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord prosper you. I want you to begin to look at those slow speech, slow tongue with a disdain eyes because your God is coming through for you. God bless you and prosper you. Thank you for listening to me this morning or this hour. Wherever you are right now, you are not born again. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. I would like to take this opportunity to pray for you this morning, that, this hour, that you may receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. That he may begin to not just be around you now, be on your inside and begin to moderate every affairs of your life. And that is quite possible. I have seen do it over and over and he's going to do it for you at this hour. You are there, you want to give your life? Shall we pray this prayer? A very simple prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I'm a sinner, but today, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. I believe in my heart that you, are, you die and you rose from the grave. You shed your precious blood for the atonement of my sin. I subscribe to that work of Calvary and I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Now, this simple prayer of faith has changed your address. You are now a child of God. Jesus himself live on your inside. So you not only have his presence, you have his person going with you. 
And that is going to make a huge difference in your life from now onward in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and prosper you. All the address display our churches and uh, my contact and the address of the churches where in our, in our various locations where you can get in touch with us has been displayed. You can check on us. And in case they are far from you, you are outside Africa, wherever you are, just look for a Bible-believing church and begin to go to church. And then you let the church know what you have done online. And they will mentor you and you will grow in faith and become victorious in every area of your life. The rest of us, I'm sure we have an offering for the Lord. Maybe your finances is of a slow speech. Maybe your finances never deliver your dream. I want you to cast that offering and let the breath of God come on the works of your hand. He multiplied the seed soul and blessed the source of the seed. As you cast that offering, he will bless your work and he will bless you as well. Heavenly Father, accept our offering, use it for the advancement of your kingdom, and in return, bless every giver. Thank you, faithful Father, in Jesus' precious name. Till I come your way again, God bless you. See you on Wednesday and also on Friday this week. God bless you and bless you real good, in Jesus' precious name. Bye and be blessed. Close like no